In today's episode of Help I Sex With My Boss, Jordan's been doing his best Rocky Balboa impression. Hey Joanna, hey Joanna. Having a stroke. William's daughter Artemis oh, has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> I'm straight. William's goddaughter Artemis has been learning to screamo. And a G and Diva wants to know if they can introduce their nan to Tinder. If you've enjoyed this episode, like and subscribe, and watch every Wednesday and Friday. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like how much Riz is too much Riz? What the heck is Riz? Isn't that a comic? Riz is the Oxford word of the year. Oh, is it? Do you not know what Riz means? No, I thought you'd missed off a J or something. (laughs) (laughs) It's quite good for you. Thank you. Jordan, you've got a bit of Riz on your face. Thanks, Abba. What? What's Riz? What was the other one that was in the The Oxford Oxford word of the year is Riz. It's, it's this I country it's, is people, really people say dogs. people say that they've got good riz and it means that they're like good at chatting up people. I think it's like short for charisma. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Adam. Adam. You Adam. Style, style posh, charm, then. or attractiveness: the ability to attract a romantic or sexual partner. Taken from the middle part of the word charisma. See, back oh, in yeah. my day, we'd say game, game. Yes. Yeah, he's got good game in. Yes, he's got good game. But now it'd be now it'd be Riz. Riz. Now it's it'd be not Riz. your day anymore, I'm afraid. What do, was do what? Think, who's got better Riz? <laughs> I'd say William's very charming. William is very charming. When I want to be. When you want to be. What was what else was on that list? Um, Oxford word of the year was Riz. It, you the situationship. Situationship again. Really, Oxford? Are they okay? I know many people that are in Swifty. Oh, I'm sorry. Swifty. Do you want a Swifty? <laughs> what? It means to, it means like it's a Taylor Swift fan, right? A ba- okay, a beige flag. I quite like this. A okay. beige flag, like uh, something Mikey does. That's not <laughs> quite a red flag. Something that's a bit like he picks his nose and eats it. Well, he doesn't do that. He picks his ass and eats it. He I doesn't do that. A so character like... trait that indicates that a partner or potential partner is boring or lacks originality. Oh, is that what it means? Oh, it means. Uh, Ben. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm um, waving my beige flag. You're literally in beige, basically, today. And what should you do if tickets to your favourite <laughs> podcast tour have sold out? Buy the book. Thank you. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexed with your boss, but we're not usual agony like answer, are we, William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert? No, we're not, Jordan North, radio presenter. I'm more Botox, you're more hard knocks. And that's from KJ. Uh, shall we have ourselves, thank you KJ, a gin and bonnet. We've got to say as well, if you hear extra giggling in the background today, or none, depending yeah. on how the episode goes, <laughs> uh, we've got Kim and Helen Ooh. with us. Do you want to... Sorry. Uh, Kim and Helen are our competition winners. That sounds a bit... They, they, <laughs> they, when we launched the book, we did a competition... With Waterstones. With Waterstones to come and meet us and watch an episode go out. So Kim and Helen have come down from Preston today. Um, already, you can tell you're in the company of Northerners because Helen said to me, Oh, train driver knew your best mate, Pilks. <laughs> of course he did. Of course he did. Everyone knows Pilks. Right, we're um, doing one part gin, two parts de Bonnet. Have you met Pilks? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got a little pizza van now. Pilks's pizza? I don't, I don't what? know. What, no, it's called, it's called Red... It, if you're in the Lancashire area and you want like a pizza hiring, it's, oh, it's really good. What's it called? It's called Red Rose Pizza. Red Rose Pizza. Oh, I think it's Red Rose Pizza. Right, Pilks, called... you owe us a pizza now. It should be called Pilks's Pizza. Pilks's Pizza. That would have been better. Yeah. Well, he could rebrand. Anyway, um, on a serious note, Jordan, um, for the toast, I would like to toast the original. We did actually meet her oh. when we went to Benidorm, Sticky Vicky, who sadly a couple of weeks ago died. Uh, it's obviously, as we have said, the uh, Sticky Vicky we met is Maria, her daughter. Um, so for original Sticky Vicky, this is for you. Sticky Vicky. Sticky Vicky. My grandma texted me about the sad news. She texted me on Wednesday when it was announced. She said, hi, Jordan. Hope you're well. Just heard Sticky Vicky has died. Tell William. Love you loads, g Oh. We should put on the morning muffs. Oh, yes. We've got black muffs, haven't we? We do. the microphones that we wore for the Queen. Yes. Should we do it for Sticky Vicky? Uh, Shall we put on morning muffs for sticks? Yeah, let's do it. Let's oh. Hang on, sorry if you're listening. I think it's only right that we oh. put on our black. Oh, God, who's been at that? Oh, I've got that one. 
for Sticky Vicky, we will put on our black muffs. Yeah. There we go. Um, as always, if you need our help with something, then we would love it if you got in touch. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com or you can tweet us or send us a message on Instagram. That's at sexofmyboss. Or you can write to William, who, in the fullness of time, promises a handwritten reply on one of our luxury greeting cards with executive cell seal envelopes. The address is on the website, sextedmyboss.com. How was your week? How are you? Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just that time of year, isn't it? Is it? Everyone's yeah. a bit stressed. Yeah. Everyone's, ready for, everyone's ready for Christmas and wants to finish work. I've already started, and I'd like to know how many times you've said this, I've mm. already started with, oh, we'll do it in New Year. Mm. Oh, what, socialising? Just, yeah. oh, well, well, it can wait till New Year. Oh, I started doing that in October. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I need to sort my garden out. I'm going to do it in New I'm Year. sorry? I need to sort my garden out. Right. Yeah, need to, my bushes <laughs> need trimming, and, my bush needs trimming and stuff, so. You're not me. No, oh, God. Have you, have you actually, since Benadon... <laughs> No, excuse me, I don't need this chat again. Because you could just do it with scissors, you know. <laughs> and Kat would appreciate it. I do. <laughs> it's very 80s, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. I've, um, I've also feel good and rejuvenated, regenerated. Re- rejuvenated. rejuvenated. You've regenerated. Re- regenerated, rejuvenated. Don't who's on. Yeah. Um, at the time of recording, I've... I've I just got back from being in Burnley the weekend, so it's always good to be in Berlin. Home. Burnley, a Burnley, and I went home had a proper Burnley curry. What's a proper Burnley curry? So you know, like you know, like when you came to my house for a curry, it was, yes, it was a bit posh, a bit fancy, weren't it? Well, it was just a curry. No, nah, nah, it was a bit fancy. This was like proper massive portions, like really spicy, like a proper Burnley curry, and I've, I've missed the Burnley curry. Okay, so I had that. Was um, it from that place you took us? When no, we went to Burnley, it no. Pa- it was in Paddyham. Paddyham. Yeah, I don't know whereabouts, but yeah. So I've been there, and um, I've went to see my brother, sister-in-law, and kids. Yes. And we had a really good night. This is Ryan and Kate. Ryan and Kate. Yeah. I've been. For, no, you've heard of the. You've heard of the Strictly Curse. Yeah. You know the Strictly Curse. What it remind those that don't know so what the Strictly Curse apparently is. Apparently, the people <laughs> that, that go on Strictly Come Dancing yeah. end up falling in love with mm. their partners. There's one going round Burnley, right? The, <laughs> the CrossFit curse. Oh. oh. Everyone's into CrossFit at the gym. <laughs> right? Kim's nodding her head. She's heard of this. <laughs> and apparently round the East Lancashire Burnley area, everyone's shagging everyone. <gasps> I mean, I mean... Two people have had sex. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So Ryan's not allowed to go to CrossFit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, apparently there's the CrossFit curse. The CrossFit curse. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be doing CrossFit. It, if you're listening, don't. Um, if your other half goes to CrossFit, I'm sure it's <laughs> fine. It's just in the. It's probably. Do you know? You, you know have what? just ended so many marriages. I know. There. I know. Burnley is a very small town, right? And there's probably one person that's gone to CrossFit and had an affair with another person that's gone to CrossFit, and that's it. No, it's mm. like around the town. It's called CrossFit curse. Wow. Okay. So that's happened. Um, we should be alarmed. I went for a run on Saturday morning. Okay. Yeah. To CrossFit? No, through Burnley. <laughs> I, honestly, and, uh, I felt. I, you, have you seen the. I felt like Rocky. You know when Rocky's running through. Is it Philadelphia? Everyone's like, hey, Rocky! <laughs> and they chuck in an apple. <laughs> honestly, I felt like. Sorry, I, I haven't seen this film. So he, there's a scene where he's running through. He's running through Philly, and everyone's like, he's a will. He's like quite a famous. <laughs> He's quite a famous boxer by now. So he's running through. People are high-fiving him and chucking him an apple. And this. I ran through Burnley Town Centre. Honestly, I felt like Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reference he needed. They were like, George, all right? I was like, ah. they went, I went to school with your mum. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I felt, honestly, I was buzzing after. Oh, it's good for ego. Honestly, I got my slowest time. Because I was like, stop and talk to everyone. Oh, bless you. Felt, felt like Rocky. So yeah, I've been back at home. should go back more. Yeah. If you need an ego boost. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. If, if, if I do have children, I will move back home so they get a proper northern upbringing. Okay. Now, how would how would you speak to a, a naughty child? How would... Well, depend, what, what have they done? How old just, are they and what have they done? They're just playing up. They're eight year old and they're just playing eight. up. And oh, okay. they're running so up they... and about and they're like nearly knocking drinks over in the living room. How would you... What would you say? How would you do it your way? Tarquin, stop that. <laughs> Okay. And would you get down to their level and say, darling, um... No, not at eight. 
But darling, because how I've seen it down here is, darling, the adults are talking and you've been... You, you, you've been oh, no, none of this. Oh, good. No. You were, you've been very disruptive. No. And, and mummy and daddy are trying to have a chat, so if you could be... St- honestly. Oh, tell me how you're feeling. I oh, wanna, no. I'll, I'm going to go back home and it'll just be like... So, it turns out they were going to CrossFit together and he come home early from work on his lunch break and he walked in on him and they were doing it in conservatory and back so conservatory Austin I am telling you now if you do that one more time I will come up there or I'll give you the best lever in your life lad can we say this so anyway it turns out that he had her underwear on because they were into that and he was still in all his cross Sebastian oh you, you are trying me now lads one two <laughs> Two and a half. <laughs> and it was just like, yeah. And it's like, uh, you're doing my head in. Honestly. So that's why I thought, this is put, this is exactly what you need. Okay. Well, yeah. I, I'm I'm probably more attuned to your way of parenting, but maybe with less shouting. But yeah. Um, I'm not saying that they're very loved kids and they look after. They're spoiled rotten. Yeah. But yeah. So that was and they've got lovely names. Thank you. Austin and Sebastian. How was your week? My week has been absolutely fine. Well, um, I talked about it um, last week, but I was officiating at uh, my friend Adam and Adrian's wedding. Yes. Um, and I've never officiated before. I should just point out I have absolutely no legal authority whatsoever. Uh, but they had actually got married a few days before. So really, I was just sort of, you know, a bit there for show. Okay. Um, and uh, hilariously, I was talking to someone else about it. And they're like, oh, they pick you because they, you know, you're the gay friend that will be able to stand up at the front and, and do the officiating. Apparently, it happens quite a lot to the gays. Is you get picked to be the the celebrant, so that was my role. Because <laughs> I think gays have a you know we have a touch of showbiz oh, okay. about us, and so we're better for sort of coordinating things. Um, and I think I did a, a very good job. Generally, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I could actually branch off, and I could be available for hire. Be a vicar? Not a vicar, no, a celebrant. A celebrant. Yes. Where you celebrate. I unions. thought that were people who don't have sex. No, that's celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you have to say in your celebrantty? I had to welcome everyone together. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now please, you know, do do the church notices, as it were. You know, don't take photos of the bride walking down the aisle. Let the photographers do that. Uh, turn your phones to silent. Uh, they were so doing... you were the MC. <laughs> no, because the more the MC, I think more comes later for the meal, uh, if you're indeed having an MC. But it, it's 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 what you know Tom the vicar did at our wedding but obviously with a non-religious bent <laughs> it's no <laughs> no reflection on tom the vicar um he DM'd me the other day. did he? he replied to your video with you and your boxers oh did he? he went i did not need to see this oh how rude tom anyway sorry of yesterday so what did you say in this the celebrancy what, in, the, in the in the service mm. uh well i introduced the people that were doing the readings uh i uh talked about how the couple had met each other did mm-hmm. a couple of jokes how did they go down? Very well, actually. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Only did a couple because it's, it is hard because it is, it is your. You, you, they wanted it to be fun, but also it is actually quite a serious service. Can you tell us the jokes? No. Go on. No, because they're they're personal to Adam Go and on. They won't mind. Just one. I can't really remember them to be perfectly honest. I I did when I had to go, and I now pronounce you man and wife, and that was in the script. I suddenly realised I do have no legal authority, so I said with absolutely no legal authority. Uh, I now pronounce you man and wife. That got a laugh. Did it? Yeah. So lovely you made their wedding all about you. (laughs) I didn't ask to be celebrate, celebrant. (laughs) I'm joking. That's a very, very sweet. Well it is hard because again, you don't you don't want to mess it up because that is two people getting married. Yeah. It's nervous. It's not like doing a best man speech where it can be joke, joke, joke. And everyone's a bit relaxed by that. That is that is the serious bit. That's what it's all about. It's not about, you know, how many photo booths you have. It's about that bit. Mm. So it was a it was a hard line to tow, but I'm told they did it quite well. I'm sure you were fantastic. Thank you very I'm much. Sure you were. What else has been going on? Well, it's a little bit uh, a little bit worrying. Um there's been some musical oddities in my life. Okay. We were driving back from Adam and Adrian's wedding and Mikey is I was driving. Mikey was in charge of the music. <laughs> And he put on Justin Bieber, Love Yourself. Yeah. yeah. Who? Th- okay, this is a boy who only listens to musicals. Okay, I am so familiar with every possible incarnation of Defying Gravity that any actress has ever done. 
And then he put, you think you know somebody, and then they put on Justin Bieber. And you can go and love yourself. It was so... It's a great song. But it's not Mikey. <gasps> oh! Oh, I forgot. Mm. You know um, one of Mikey's favourite musical theatre actresses and singers that sang at your wedding? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Small World. Oh, it's a small world. <laughs> um, her other half... Yes. Is I'm working on a documentary with him. <gasps> oh, really? We drove from Manchester to uh, London this weekend. Gosh. Yeah, Small World. That's w- and do you know what actually? So Louise Dearman, that was that's the uh, the actress. She sang at our wedding. She sang two beautiful songs, Rainbow Connection and um, Being Alive. And <laughs> Bee Gees. <laughs> no, that's Staying Alive. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, on she went on the piano. Ah. <laughs> and a capello version of it. Acoustic, a capella. An acoustic version. Stay in love. Anyway, on the day of our wedding anniversary this year, which was September the 16th, um, Mike and I obviously went out for a nice dinner in the evening. But during the day, Jonathan and uh, I were in Brighton interviewing my sister Daisy for our Keeping Up Appearances podcast. Anyway, we finished doing that. We go and have lunch. And this is on my first wedding anniversary. On the table next to me is Louise Dearman, who yes. sang at our wedding. I think she was with... Yes, your, your, her husband or partner. Partner. Yeah. She was with partner Andrew. Yeah. How weird is that? that he did mention that. It's it was lovely. World. And actually, Mikey was seeing her in concert the next night. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Small anyway, world. hello there to Louise German. Um So what, what's wrong with having Justin Bieber? It's just odd. It's, it's just it's, odd. It, uh, because it's not, it's not on brand. It's like if... That got... album he brought out a few years ago, it, it, literally every track's a banger. And people wall. wanted to dislike him because people yeah. thought he was a bit of a brat. And he brought like, love yourself out. And what do you mean? And yeah. all, it was honestly... Sorry. Sorry? Sorry. Right. <laughs> it was... It, that album was... That is a good album. It was a very good album. Yes, but you. it's not very Mikey. So why is did it? Put, you it's like you putting on, on I don't know, so. Mozart or something. That's it not just true. would be. Uh, excuse me. I've been listening to a lot of classic FM. All lately, right, Granddad. Because I went to a hotel in Devon and they had classic FM on in every room. Okay. And then I was like, oh, it's really chilled this. Hmm. So sometimes when I get up in the morning or at weekend, put a bit of classic on, light a candle. Light a candle in the morning. Oh, it's, it's candle season for me. This. <laughs> I'm really into candles at the moment. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. Different yeah. scented candles. I've, I've started using that one that you got me. You and Mike. I didn't get you a candle. I got you hand wash. <laughs> oh, so it was Andy Peters. Sorry, name <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm using the candle that you gave us. Oh, yeah. That's maybe where you're getting confused. Thanks, Andy. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. Lovely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? No, so it's can- what, where was I going with that? I don't know. Anyway, Justin Bieber's fine. Yeah. Mm. Artemis, well, tell us about Artemis. Continuing a musical oddity theme, Artemis, my lovely four year old goddaughter, uh, is obviously, um, well, she, you know, she's highly intelligent. She's very opinionated. She's obviously going through a few issues at the moment. And um, she, she was telling off uh, Ellie, her mother. Okay. Because um, again, Artemis has strong opinions. And mm-hmm. she was sitting in the back seat and she was telling uh, Ellie how cross she was with Ellie. And uh, Ellie was obviously telling her about, you know, how to manage her emotions, etc. and whatever, and said that actually putting on some music sometimes helps with emotions. So Artemis uh, then has asked for Evanescence, Evanescence Bring Me to Life <laughs> and started singing along <laughs> with Evanescence. <laughs> this is brilliant. So yes, it's a little hellraiser. Can I just say, mm. Ellie's going to have a lot of problems with her when she's going yeah. through her teenage years, <laughs> which is, which is going to be great. And also, you and Artemis are going to be friends for life. Yes. When you're an old man and she comes around to see her, you are going to used to have just got this next year connection. Yeah. You are. She's a very. I'm very... taking her to see Frozen next week. Oh, are you? Yeah, that's her Christmas present. Good luck with that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it better be good. <laughs> it's meant to be really good. No, I know, but if it's not, if Artemis doesn't think it's good, she'll sit there and she'll announce to the entire audience that it's Fantastic. not very good. When I took her to the, I think I've told said this before. When we took her to the zoo last year, um, in amongst seeing all the rats uh, that there were, um, we went to this like ten minute puppet show thing, and it's you know they've got their like finger puppets on and whatever, and they're like children shall we go to the bottom of the ocean and she went i don't think so <laughs> she's very 
very opinionated <laughs> to get uh, on the right wrong side. Well, oh, and also well, this weekend. Yep. Um, as it's being referred to in our house by my husband, it's slightly worrying. Uh, we've got double panto, or as he refers to it, it's our DP weekend, which is um, unfortunate. <laughs> um, so we've got that, uh, and obviously Ben's soiree. Right, thing is, George, we've got two pantomimes that we're going to, and uh, so I've got day off site from lads. So I've got. Well, two, it's at the weekend. I've got two. Yeah, builders work weekends. Do they? I mean, they won't work past R four on a weekday, but. Mm. R3 but yeah you've ruined that joke so let's just move on sorry um, <laughs> anyway so we've got our DP weekend coming up you're not be... coming to Ben's birthday so it's I am coming to Ben's what birthday what time will you get there 4 p.m. yes that's when it starts isn't it well yeah I mean it starts at 4 p.m. well that's I'm I, that's what the I'm invitation I'm expecting is. people to come at like 6 7 but well yeah. why put 4 on an invitation we're out doing Sainsbury's till half 12 yeah I've got to put my tree up well, you can cancel if you want. What time are you getting there? Four. What time are you leaving? So I'm going in two parts. Ben is bookending my Saturday night. So I'm going, just... I'm going to four mm-hmm. for 45 minutes. 45 why minutes? Don't, that, what, that's, why don't you just come after Panto? No. Well, I am. So I'll go to there to the start, get the party started. Mm-hmm. Go to Gay Panto. Go back. What time will you be there? Four. After Panto? Well, whenever it finishes. What time does Panto finish, roughly? Uh, I don't know. I've never been. I think it's just a one-act one. I don't know. So you'd be there for nine, ish. Okay. Yeah. I think it starts at seven. What you starting at four p.m.? Well, that's when I'm ar- I'm arriving at the venue. Okay. We'll put you don't, you doors don't... from four. Alex is coming as well. I think. Self shoot, Alex. Self shoot, Alex. That's nice. Okay. Well, I'll be there from four, and then again afterwards. There is literally no point if you coming for forty-five. No, there isn't. Don't... You have made such an issue. Yeah, because it's my thirtieth. You've invited me to your 35th birthday party in August next, next year. year. Like, Why have that you is sent insane. that out? It's a save the date. And, and also, it's the same day as Reading Leeds Festival. Yeah, and it's three, da- three days before my 30th, he sends his invite for his 35th birthday in August next year. I think we have a and different guest list. And he's blaming me. Are you... Why, why are you having... I a... came to your 30th party. Yes. yes. Yeah, but we have a different and guest that, list. You make Bloody... exceptions for your friends that mean something to you. Um... Right, hang on. Please. Please. It's all getting very tense. Very best of order. <coughs> I also agree with Ben. Why are you having a 35th birthday? Because I'm turning 35. This is before your eye goes baggy. <laughs> 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 no, hopefully that will be done before then. Okay. I'll, I'll be, it's, it's a new eye debut party. Really. Second point. Bear with us, Gene Divas. <laughs> Why are you having a birthday party that, start, birthday party that starts at 4pm? I'm, it's just so people can like drop in and drop out. Right. Okay. So if we, if normally, we get there, hang on. But six, I've, seven, I've dropped. Yeah, okay. that's perfect. That's what I want. That's oh, ideal okay. for me. Right. Then why put four? Because you know we're still William. Still going to be half time. I let you do your parties. Right. I'll, I'll call it order, order, order. Stop there. Right. Okay. Because I, you know, I like. It starts at seven. This William, me, you don't need to come. This is me only Saturday off. I'm going to watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Then I'll have a little nap. Falls and horses. Perfect. I like my little Saturdays at home. Right. I will be there from four. Okay. It doesn't start till seven. What time are you getting there? Right. Does it start at four or start it's at not, seven? It starts at six, seven. <clears throat> Is everybody else, do we... Right. It's, just, it's just nice that Jordan, okay. you're making the effort. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> who, are you not, going to, who are you going to panto with? Joe and Luke, Will and Freddie. Right. The ones that were invited to the titty bar. A few weeks ago, if you remember that. Okay, right. Is this the one with Dawn French in? No, that was last year. Jennifer Saunders is right. the day. We need after. to move on. Um, this has gone on long enough. Right. Should we, we go all... on to Jordan's jolly joke of the week? Are we? St- are we all friends? Say, love you, Ben. Ben, I love you, and I'm going to miss you so much. Yeah. Ben, say, I love you, William, and I'm going to miss you so much on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bloody being there. <laughs> Come oh. after. Right, jolly joke of the week. <laughs> Here's the jingle. If you like a chap that's cheeky and northern, you're in for a treat. With our Jordan, and if a giggle is what you see, you're sure to love Jordan's jolly joke of the week. How are... <laughs> this is from Sammy. Okay. Sammy Reed on Instagram. How are the films Titanic and The Sixth Sense alike? I don't know. I'll tell you the punchline after the break. All right, Gene Divas, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, 
Today's Jordan's Jolly Joke of the Week has been sent in by Sammy on Instagram. She says, how are the films Titanic and The Sixth Sense alike? The films. Mm. I see dead people. <laughs> I think that's okay. I think that's fine. Think that's is that okay? There's yeah. enough time. I see dead people. I, the films. Yes. The films. Okay. Well, and I in mean, reality as well. Titanic happened. <laughs> it's not a documentary, but it's, it's the next best thing. Right. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing that Leo DiCaprio survived that. Yes. Hi, Jordan. Short and sweet joke for your podcast. What do you call a man with no legs? I don't know. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Shall we go on to the listener problems? Having fun so far, Kim and Helen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shall we go on to the listener problems? Yes. This is from Anonymous. Hi, William and Jordan. Last week I had a great... Last week, I had my great nan come to stay with us for the weekend because we hadn't seen each other for a while. We did the usual catch up, but then she asked me a question I never thought I would hear. She asked, could you set me up on Tinder? I'd quite like to have a look on there. I didn't set her up on it, mostly because I didn't think it would end well. My question is, what should you do if an older family member asks to set them up on a dating app? Lots of love, Anonymous. There's 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 an older dating app for over 50s. Is there? I'm sure there is. Nanda or something? What's it? Nanda. <laughs> Randa. Not Granda. <laughs> Granda. There, that, there is. That's the gay app for better class of people. There's, um, I, I'll just Google it now. So I would say there's an older... Saga match. Old, it's, is it older dating app? Uh, date my age. I'm just looking at the senior dating ones. eHarmony. Isn't that an older one? I think that's reverent. Oh, here we go. Look, silver singles. Silver singles. <laughs> senior dating. Senior match. Our time. Our time. Well, not much time. <laughs> um, there's a few. <laughs> there's a, don't. I'm on, that was a joke. So I'm only joking. There's a few. I don't think there's... Look, Anonymous, I, if, I, presume, I presume you're your Not much time nannies. would be a good dating app. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well. That'd be yeah. another good one. <laughs> <laughs> um. I wouldn't be weirded out that your great nan is wanting to be on the dating. I'm just single. I mean, it's just that's how people meet now. And yeah. I know we like to think that sort of no generation above us has ever had sex, but that's obviously not how it works because otherwise you wouldn't be there. So I would um, just help her. Be nice. It's a good conversational thing to do as well. Yeah. And yeah. It also better make sure that you set it up properly and her settings are set correctly then she tries to do it potentially if we're being stereotypical with older people doesn't get the technology right and does something wrong you might as well ha- help her be safe on it mm. so um i would i would yeah. swallow your pride and help her, out. help her everyone's entitled to love oh stick that on a t-shirt that's nice well, ben will now you know what he's like yeah <laughs> he'll be selling them in january well, i'm surprised helen and kim hasn't <laughs> been sold any merchandise since they've been here oh it's still time he's already gone mad because we've given him a free <laughs> book <laughs> I can't believe I'm the one that gets that. I haven't said a word. You see, um, how much Philadelphia cheese is in your fridge? Mm, none, actually. Well. See, Ben would set up his grand on dating app, but he's sold her. Oh, she's actually passed away. This <laughs> that year, was. So. I just realised that was recently. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. We'll cut this. <laughs> it's fine. I am so sorry. I, I realised as soon as I... Six... She's, she's being interred uh, at the start of next year. I am so... Are you going to be there for that? Uh, no, because I'll be in South America. You're right. getting her stuffed? No, interred. <laughs> what one was that again? Interred is when you put get your ashes put That's in the right. ground. Uh, ben, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what was your nan called? Delphine. De- I'm so oh, that's sorry. A that's a lovely name. name. Oh, that was a very bad joke. But it was because he'd sell his nan, you know, because he sell like. I know it's, let's a, t- move it's on. a term of phrase. This is from Cindy. <laughs> Hello, William Jordan, EPB. I have an etiquette question about gift giving. My husband and I have been together for over twenty-five years, and we always have this discussion at this time of year. My husband insists on giving me a gift list for things he wants. He asks me for a list of gifts, uh, gifts I want too. I think it's fine for us to consult our wish lists via Amazon, but making it mandatory seems rude. I consider myself a great gift giver. I make note of interests and items people talk about wanting. If I can only buy from his list, it takes the fun out of giving him a gift. And I think if I have to make a list of gifts I want, I may as well just go buy them myself. There is no thought or care as he has to put into it. What do you think? Is it rude or do you prefer the list approach? Many thanks. Cindy Goodrich. 
I, I can see both sides, Cindy. I think a, a Christmas list is a good idea, mm-hmm. but I don't think you have to... Uh, you shouldn't expect people to buy from it. It's just a, here is a list of the sort of things I like, and this might inspire you to get me something. That's a good idea, mm. yeah. But it's also people like me that aren't great givers. Are you not? <laughs> 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 Not from what I've heard. <laughs> Grow up. Or felt. Uh, experience. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not a great gift giver, so I like right. people to tell me what to get them. Okay. Like my mom, my do you like being told what to do? My mum's literally texted me today about, she said, is this bad? Does this mean I'm a bad son? You's best. Uh, ref present, seeing you is the best, but, uh, oh, bless her, seeing you is the best, but a nice black jumper. So she's put, <laughs> ref present, seeing you is the best, but a nice black jumper, size 12, medium would be lovely. Anything but roll neck shows my wrinkles. I've decided I'm talking your dad out of it this year, but two, I decided they are for us. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's maybe in reference to a conversation you'd had previously, I would suggest that last bit. So I think it's fine to... Um, have a bit of a list, but you can go off piece and get them a little surprise. Don't yes. take it to heart. Yeah, but I think lists are helpful. What's your mum want this year? New cigarette holder? <laughs> Just champagne. <laughs> More champagne? Yeah. Champagne? All, Christmas all champagne? Is that all no, she actually, wants? my mother is the last person I've got to buy for. What Ooh. does she want? I don't know. Well, she, her list is terrible. What's on it? Oh, it's just awful. Oh, oh no, I do know what I'm getting her. Oh, can you say? No. She don't listen, go on. No, no, but she might be told because oh. people that she works with lis- listen, so I don't I'm want her. I mean... I don't work, I volunteer. I have not worked since I met my husband in the 80s and I am a lady of leisure. I play tennis on Tuesdays. Mondays. Mondays. <laughs> is it actually Mondays? Yeah. <laughs> when I first met her, she was in a tennis gear. Yeah, yeah she does tennis yeah. twice a week. Does she do it twice a week? <laughs> Mondays and Wednesdays. Oh. How's a tennis wrist? Yes, good. Is it good? A tennis elbow, you A tennis get. elbow. Yeah. Sorry, my dad has a tennis elbow. Does he? He's never Does played he play tennis. tennis? <laughs> <laughs> Right, come on, let's move on. This is from Catherine. Dear William Jordan EPB, I have a bit of a moral dilemma. I work locally and tend to run into clients when I go out into town. Sometimes I just want to be able to go out about my tasks and errands without having to stop and chat with anyone. I have an identical twin sister and wondered what the etiquette is if I want to impersonate her and just shrug my shoulders and say, sorry, I don't know who you are. (laughs) It would certainly save a lot of time and I could blame any questionable outfit choices on her. I don't think my sister would mind, but do you think I should give it a go? Many thanks, Catherine. Yeah, my two mates, Ash and Ollie, get this all the time. Okay. Yeah, and they just sometimes pretend to be the other person because it's easier than going. I would say it's a two-way street, Catherine. So if you are going to do it, you've got to get your sister's permission and then she has to get your permission that she can pretend to be you. Sorry, someone's just oovering outside as we... I I we might as well be on Piccadilly Circus with this <laughs> podcast. Um, seriously. <coughs> um, did you see that really fucked up TikTok? Right. It was a twin. It was a two twin girls, right? Mm. And her boyfriend was round, and the non-girlfriend twin was like cuddling him on the sofa, and he was like watching telly and playing with her hair and like you know giving her a little tickle and stuff. Mm. <laughs> and he didn't realize. <laughs> He didn't realise that it wasn't his girlfriend, it was the identical twin. And she's like filming herself in selfie mode. And I was just like, this is really fucked up. That is weird. It is, isn't it? No, my algorithm has not given me that. <laughs> <laughs> Neither's mine. My friend showed it me. Oh, I see. <laughs> I need to stop Googling twins. Okay. Oh, Jordan! <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I haven't. Uh, that was a joke. I haven't. Oh, this... Uh, right. Have we got any more? Yes, we've got... Uh, Oh, oh tell, why don't you tell them to come in and join recording, <laughs> Ben? No, don't. They're only trying to do a job. This is from a long-time listener. Hi, gentlemen. My friend constantly arrives too early for events. Oh, if only. On numerous occasions, we will arrange to meet... A... <laughs> we will arrange to meet... We're not going to be friends at the end of this episode. No, we're not, no. This has been a very chaotic episode. At an event at a certain time, but I will receive a text message 45 minutes beforehand telling me she has arrived. Ugh. She will... <laughs> she always says no hurry it's literally you yeah i say no rush but yeah but i always rush my final preparations and end up at yep. the event with damp hair or forgetting something in the rush yep. we've spent so many wasted hours waiting in the cold for establishments <laughs> to open i'm always punctual myself but arrive five minutes beforehand so i know she's not compensating for me being late as i am writing this we are due to meet at a restaurant for lunch that doesn't open its doors for another hour but she sent me a text saying she's waiting outside instead of my usual response of i'll be there as soon as possible 
I've replied, see you in, a, see you in an hour as planned. I oh. now feel like I'm being rude, but have decided to write to you and ask your advice instead of rushing around to meet her earlier. Oh. How can I handle this situation in the future? Thank you. Kind regards. A long time listener. There's a lot of passive aggressiveness going on. Yeah. This makes you look normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I lot. wouldn't text you a full hour before. I, I love that. What was it? Uh, I'll be there. Uh, see you in an hour. As planned. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very William Hansen response. Did you yes. ever talk about the time when I first had my housewarming party? And you text me an hour before it was due saying, just a bit early. I'm in Not the- an hour. It was half an hour. It was an hour. It was half an hour. It was an hour. It was half an hour. I'm just in the prep before, um, around the corner, but no rush. I went, oh, you can come now and I'll show you around if you want. And he'd, oh, before he even sent it, he already replied, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, no, no, no. You had messaged me saying, if you are early, you can come now. Because I knew you'd be early. And I was. Right, okay. Um, right. What's the correct way? I think you handle it both. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm a, people being late is irritating. But in this instance, as you have said, long-time listener, you are not being late. You're turning up on time. You turn up five minutes beforehand, which is absolutely fine. Um, so I do think your friend is being a bit OCD. But actually, you could talk to her and say, you know, she's obviously worried about she, 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 I would say she's probably lonely because she's worried about people not turning up for things and her missing out on things, which is why she wants the reassurance that you are there because she's obviously looking forward to your company. And thus she's looking for some reassurance and perhaps overcompensating. So I would actually have a talk with her. Okay. That's good advice. In my opinion. That's mm. really good advice. Or just like, I, I sometimes like getting somewhere early and mm. having a drink on my own. Yes. I love having a pint on my own. Do you? Yeah. Oh, well, Ben will be having quite before, a few pints on his own this weekend. Before you've... <laughs> no one's <laughs> turning up. horrible. Because um, no one knows what that, time it starts. Well, ben, there'll well, be loads of people there. Just well. to see me and William, if anything. So. <laughs> What's the thing? <laughs> We're the draw. That's why he's getting so animated. Oh, don't be horrible. That is horrible. It, it's, it's just every every year, like the last three years. Last year was train strikes. No one came. The year before that, COVID. Did COVID. you invite me last year? Yeah, did you have a party last year? Yeah, I'm not aware of that. Oh, sorry. I forgot to invite you. Well, that's at Ben and that's fine and that's your prerogative. Yeah. I mean, it is in a brewery in East London, so it's not exactly... Your... I've got to set off in five minutes to get there. I mean, his is in, was in the bloody top of a building in central London, so I have to part with that. Yeah, he took us up the Shard. <laughs> it wasn't the Shard. I took you up in the Sky Garden. Oh. Well, it was a very good joke, so... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a joke. This last one is from Justin and Marketa. Ooh. Marketa? Hey, William and Jordan. My wife and I have just been invited to a few Christmas parties this holiday season. They're obviously American. What's the etiquette for a host gift versus a regular Christmas gift? Oh, we regularly question. exchange Christmas gifts with our friends, so we do give them a host gift for the party and then a regular Christmas present closer to the day. Or do we just do the Christmas gift? Thanks, Justin and Marquetta. Justin and Marquetta. I don't know if you have it over there, but get them a Debenhams voucher. I don't think they are actually American. I think I was being oh, okay. passive aggressive. Uh, to be fair, we... Devonham's is shut, isn't Yeah, I've just realised. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do think in some circumstances, vouchers are good. Mm. Like a housewarming party. A nice... Mm. Of if you know it's voucher. from a shop that they like, absolutely fine. You know, if you like, oh, it's a Fortnum's gift voucher, great, lovely, they love Fortnum's. Or they go to John Lewis or M&S or whatever. I love a Blue Cross sale. Yes, mm. I can see. What would that make, Cole, in Debenham's? Debenham's. Proper dad bake. Oh, dad's door. I don't know. What were it called? The Debenham, the Peter. No, anyway. No. Um, I look. If you can't look, if you can afford both, obviously do both. That's lovely. If you can't afford both, then you just give one and you go. This is your Christmas gift. As long as you are bringing something. Just take. Yeah, I don't think you need both. I disagree, with William. There. I, I, I think one gift, and it could be just. So, say you take a nice wine round as a ho- as a hosting gift. Yeah. Take mulled wine round. Mold, mold Say that wine, three times mold, quickly. Mulled wine round. Yes. And take that round and have it as a... Take that round. Take... Oh, <laughs> all three of them. Just something Christmassy. <laughs> or say you're going to get um, a, 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 a house ornament, get them a Christmas ornament. Something Christmassy. Yeah. I, even now, the smell of wool, mulled wine knocks me sick. Do you like it? Well, I drank it when I was 14, didn't I? Did you I, have to have your <laughs> stomach pump? I didn't have to have my stomach pump, but I nicked it from the back of the cupboard. Oh. I drank it with Chris Becker on Park, and <laughs> I mean, mulled wine is meant to be warm. Ooh, even the smell of it now. No, I don't like it. Bacardi and mulled wine. As my as my uh, friend and colleague Joe says, she's, hot wine. Why? Why? <laughs> hot it's wine. A, it's weird. It's a fair point. Yeah. It's just you know now when people have it in that little witch's pot thing. Cauldron. No, the 
they put it in like that to make it look fancy. Yeah. I'm like, ugh. Mm. I, what you could do, though, is you take a present, which is their Christmas present, to the party, and then you write them a thank you letter for the party, which obviously you should be doing anyway, any time of year. That's what you can do. Okay. That's my advice. Well, I think that's very good advice. Uh, obviously, we've got the weekend release on Friday, yep. Jordan. Um, but what is coming up next week? Next week, we've got two huge final episodes of 2023. Oh. There's going to be some festive surprises that may involve dressing up. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be very, very good. And we're rounding off the year with another Fistmas special. Oh, Fistmas. Fistmas time. Again, we have had a few new listeners Mistletoe this year. Mistletoe and Should we just to... Just explain what Fistmas is. Uh, Fistmas was um, a listener who wrote into us last year. T- no, like was it two, two or three. years ago. Potentially three. No, it was t- two, it was three years ago. We had a listener who said we have friends around at Christmas. We call it Fistmas, friends at Christmas. Yes. And I said that's brilliant. So uh, we're, we're going to have another Fistmas special, and we might be handing out some end of year awards. Oh, seeing as we never win any. <laughs> <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> it was my joke in the production meeting, but thanks. You steal it. Production meeting. Pro- production yeah. meeting. Ben, ben, knelt down, ben knelt down with his laptop and talked to us for a few things. Oh, we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> ben kneels down before us at the start of the video. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, Kim, Helen, have you enjoyed watching? Yeah. 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 Have, you, have you learned lots? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Once more with sincerity. <laughs> Kim, Helen, have you enjoyed it? Yes. There you go. Good. Great. It's northern sincerity they're for from, you. They're from Blackburn. Yes. Yeah. Are you all related? No, I think so. Black, <laughs> and, yeah. Blackburn. 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 Do, they don't. Do you have a Blackburn? Is that yeah, how you I'm speak? In? Yeah. yeah, but is that how you speak in Blackburn? Yeah, yeah Blackburn. With a with a rolled R. Going on at Ewood. Watch, go, watch Rovers. Rovers. So I say this: Blackburn's more like that. Blackburn. Rovers. It's a bit Somerset. And Burnley's more like. We're going to watch Burnley. Okay. A bit like that. A bit like that. And then Preston's a bit harder, I think. Go on, give me a Preston accent. Preston accent. Aricha. Aricha. Cha. Cha. Anyway. Well, how lovely. As always, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday. You can watch us on YouTube on Wednesdays and Fridays. And you can share us on your socials all week. You can send your tales of trepidation to help at sexofmyboss.com. Or you can tweet or send us a message on Instagram at sex of my boss or you can write to William who in the fullness of time promises a handwritten reply in one of our luxury gre- greeting cards and we've executive self seal envelopes the address is on the website sexofmyboss.com see you on Friday <laughs>